welcome everyone to the last episode this year of Sunday Sentiments. Uh, if you're new to this is a show where a panel comes together and discusses current events and hot topics from all over the world. Today we have four stories. The first is about questionable police procedures. The second is about uh, Black Lives Matter. And the third is a firing of a teacher at Eton College. And then the final one is the topic of the new COVID vaccine. Okay, so I am taking the first topic, with, which is about questionable police procedures. And I'm just going to share my screen uh, and show you this account, and then we can discuss it. Cheryl, the mayor said earlier this afternoon she didn't know that graphic police body camera existed until it surfaced in media reports earlier this week. She said it was never brought to her attention. But after city lawyers tried to legally block it from becoming public, there's a group of aldermen tonight who say the mayor owes the victim and everyone a full investigation. Chicago police officers stormed into Anjanette Young's home on February 22nd, 2019, attempting to execute a search warrant. But records show the officers had the wrong home. As she stood there, naked and helpless, armed officers searched Young's home. You guys have seen, that was the first story, which is a woman in America who, uh, like she said, the police just burst into her house. Um, she just come from a shift at work. She's a social worker and she was getting undressed. So she was completely naked. The police burst in, um, shouted at her to put her hands up while she's naked. Uh, and didn't even explain at the start why they were in her home. Uh, and according to the story, she kept asking, can I get dressed? And also asking, why are you here? And telling them 43 times that you're in the wrong house. Can you please confirm uh, your sources? And this went on for 13 minutes while she was naked and they were in her house for half an hour until the sergeant came in and, and realized uh, they had the wrong um, information. So I want you guys, because we had a, a panelist who said, uh, how, can we, how can people who are not black support anti-racist movements like Black Lives Matter or any other anti-racist movement that's there? Um, and I just want you guys to think about this as a woman and how you would feel as a woman of any race if you are in this situation. Um, and I'd also like to tell you that this lady herself said she believes strongly that if this was a white woman, they would have been treated as a victim or a vulnerable person uh, and clothed, and then they'd have proceeded with their search. So I want to hear what you guys think of this story. So first of all, uh, thank you very much, Shiko, Kashi, uh, and uh, um, Imani, Shakira, for everyone for um, participating to this topic, which is very important. Uh, it was me, in fact, the last week I asked for um, uh, talk about uh, how can not uh, uh, black people support anti-racist uh, uh, protest movements, everything uh, to support, embrace the black cause. And I think uh, this that has happened to this woman uh, is, is a terrible, is really terrible and um, I have, um, no words actually to express um, my feelings. Um, I, of course, uh, this behavior is not acceptable. Is not acceptable. And uh, uh, what is uh, even worse is the fact that uh, she has tried to explain plenty, plenty of times that they were mistaking house and everything. But also, if it was the right house, I mean, it's a violation of human rights. Uh, it's um, the way the way that they made her feel so even if she was a criminal also in this case uh, this behavior from the police officers has absolutely uh, to be condemned and so uh, i would like uh, that uh, every woman in this uh, uh, panel uh, but uh, in every uh, situation is more um 
we have to collaborate more women with women with every color with with a more to implement a dialogue so i'm here also to enrich all all of your opinions and to to make them a, a very a treasure to treasure your opinions that they are very important for me to understand more about this topic and how can i in my little action uh, do something even more uh, thank you Antonella and, and thank you for acknowledging that whether the woman was a criminal or not, which she wasn't, uh, even the US system, it's innocent until proven guilty. And I think also everyone deserves their dignity, their human dignity. So to be left standing naked as a woman with nine men of power around you must have been very traumatizing and scary. Uh, we'll, thank you, Antonella. We'll take Shamsa next, please. And then Shiro. Uh, so uh, I would comment uh, on that in, uh, you know, uh, from my two point of view. One was the procedure that was completely wrong. If uh, they they broke their her lock and everything, when they entered in the house, they should, you know, at least, at least they should consider that if we are at right place, and they should see the ID of person. If they got some information from somewhere, they should, you know, uh, cross checking. They should at least cross check. We are at right at, at the first place. She was a lady and then she was naked. They should at least some space to her. She was not going anywhere. So and at the same time, it was not only the police uh, brutality, it is the state brutality. If the, uh, you know, the uh, police officers are still there and they are not suspended and uh, they, they didn't, uh, you know, and they said, sorry, we, uh, we got wrong information. And uh, in spite of everything, they, they are intact with their jobs and everything. It's state brutality. And the other thing, the racism, if we talk about racism infects all over the world, you know, the, especially, you know, the white countries and they want other people and they want by their self wants to, uh, you know, they want to remain silent so that it can prevail. So the best solution is speak out loud against this brutality and against this racism. That's it. Thank you, Shamsa. I will just take your last point as one of the points to share with uh, Antonella who said she wants to know how to do what to do and it's speak out. If you see any instances where there's any injustice or racism, don't be scared to speak out uh, and call it out. Uh, and if you don't feel safe, then report it. Uh, do something about it because uh, if, if it's just people of color or black people complaining, it might fall on deaf ears, but when other people say we're seeing it too and they complain about it, then hopefully it can change. Um, and also just a point that I don't know if you guys saw, but the guy they actually wanted was on PAG. He was on PAG uh, as, so they could easily have checked and found he was next door because he had a tag that showed his location. Uh, when that lady was saying, I live here alone, please can you double check? Uh, thank you, Shamsa. Yes, Shiro? Um, I wanted to, to thank Antonella very much because she's very interested in supporting um, the Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. and the against minorities, which is very commendable. Now, I was thinking that for someone to, re to, to support, even if they are not of a minority, one thing they need to have is empathy. Put themselves in that person's situation. Don't think it couldn't happen to me. Just think if that was if that woman was my mother, my sister, myself, or someone close to me, how would I feel? Forget the color. Just think if it was someone who was close to you or even yourself. Then that way someone will be uh, will have that motivation to 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 be outraged not just to keep quiet and watch silently like most people do and because it doesn't affect them. Thank you, Shiro. Yes, I think if it was you and that's why this connects to intersectional feminism. I think I'm a woman, if I as a woman 
had this happened to me, how would I feel? Because one of the issues we keep discussing within our groups of uh, womanism or intersectional feminism is how a lot of the time mainstream feminists don't cry out when things like this happen to women of other races. If this was a white woman, uh, the feminists would be out, you would know this story. You would know it, it would be in the main news. But because she's a minority woman, we didn't know this story until we started discussing it in groups like this. So that's why women have to come together. Uh, Shakira and then Marie Claire, please. Yeah, it's just that I've actually, I don't know if we were, uh, talked about this before on the sh like YouTube channel, but I remember hearing about another thing, exactly the same thing that happened. And instead it was a teenage girl. I think she was 18 years old coming out of the shower and they refused to let her put on her towel and they took her and dragged her outside of her house and it was the wrong house, in front of all of her neighbors, in front of her little sister who's screaming in the back, terrified, and they just refused to even say why they were arresting her. And I'm pretty sure that this is like, I'm like not 100% sure, but pretty sure that it's like a requirement by law for officers to state why they have a warrant to come into your home. Mm -hmm. like even if you have a no-knock warrant where you don't have to announce yourself, you still have to say after you like taking down these people while you're there. Yeah. You can't just like refuse to be like, no, I can't tell you. Like they were doing to this poor woman. Yeah, you're right, Shakira. Thank you. There have been several stories, like I said, that are not in the main news because these are minority women. Uh, a lot of stories which one day we'll discuss when we have more time. So we have Marie Claire and then Jamila. Yes, Marie Claire. Yeah, um, thanks uh, guys for having me. Um, so I think as uh, um, some of you have said, definitely this is a violation of a civil right, especially human rights, which uh, yes, as we know that, you know, Article 8 that support us to live the private life and the home, which really the state and with that the government doesn't have a right to kind of violate our private life unless it's really it, when it's like a terrorism or when it's needed. But someone like how was wronged by being a wrong person. And so I think I'm thinking this in uh, terms of law. If the law is about correcting the wrong, they should start collecting the way police is arresting the people who are uh, not criminals. So what are they going to do? Because the story is out. Imagine as Ichiko, you said, that's a very a traumatic event. And now the whole world knows, which is good because as someone said, they, you know, we have a right of uh, freedom of speech, things like that need to be spoken out to see that the law will need correcting all this action. The way, you know, in America it's very known and it's actually really sad that black people are still being treated that way. And yes, Antonio, you know, definitely, probably we need uh, people, we need un united people to be together, whatever you're white or you're black, mm -hmm. you're, uh, wherever you come from, because I think as, all of you have said it could be your mom, it could be your sister, it could be someone, it could be you. So I think in raising awareness about how we can uh, stop the law really treating uh, black minority this way, we need other color, other race to come together and fight for uh, uh, you know, everyone is uh, human right. Okay, thank you very much, Marie Claire. You brought in about the law and how the law or procedures need to be looked at. And again, Antonella, uh, in answer to your question, this is another way you can actually push for changes in laws and procedures as a, a white ally, because that's, mm -hmm. that, that will actually change things. So what we, we need to do is tackle institutional racism because this state violence on minority groups is only sustained because you know, these are institutions. 
But if we come together, if, if white allies, whether white women, white feminists come together and say, this is wrong, we need to look at the change in laws and procedures and then campaign for changes in laws and procedures, then that can actually lead to something because uh, I think we need to start at the top, break down the institutional racism and then it comes down uh, to the ground. Uh, yes, Jamila. Um, it's okay. I think that how you ended it was was good for the editing. So we've got about two minutes left. Should we just so, no? Just give your point because there's two minutes and you need to be okay. Out. Um, basically, what I wanted to say is I agree with what Marie Claire said. I think that there should be a law on if you break into someone's house without stating why you're there and you disrupt this person and you have the wrong person in the end anyway that there should be precautions to that because the fact that nothing's done like sometimes they won't even say sorry after busting into your house like that and that's even more disrespectful on top of the fact that they came in without telling you why they're there and I think that it there should be a law for the citizens to say something about what police are doing to them without actually following the law that they're connected to it doesn't yeah. really make sense but yeah Thanks, Jamila. Imani, I think you have about 40 seconds. One minute and 40 one, seconds. One minute. Come on, Imani, let's hear your, your opinion. Um, all I wanted to say is that, yeah, it was obvious that it was racism, in my opinion, because I've seen many examples of different treatments. Um, and also, Antonella, what I believe you can do to uh, help is what Tashiku said, like, stop it when it's happening, speak up, but also like be willing to listen when someone wants to talk about it and, you know, just listen and not think maybe someone could be overreacting or maybe you didn't take, maybe you misunderstood because mm -hmm. many people say that even though they don't mean bad, they, they tend to do that. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks Imani uh, for sharing about listening when people give you the experiences as minorities please don't try and say maybe you misunderstood because you will never ever ever understand really how it is to live in their skin or in their situation as much as you can try to be empathetic it's very difficult to tell people how they should experience things because you're not the one experiencing it uh, yes Antonella I just need 10 seconds to quickly thank you. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, it was very important uh, because I'm very interested. In fact, I want to raise awareness in young people in my Italian community. Thank you. Thank you, Antonella. And like we said, uh, this is a topic that needs longer than 15 minutes. This was just trying to connect one story, get people to think about you as a woman. If that was happening to you, how would you feel? So forget that she was a black woman and then understand why we say this is racist behavior from the police because of the different treatment uh, to black women as opposed to or minority women as opposed to uh, white women. So thank you very much. The time's up and I'm gonna pass on to uh, Eshi who has a story about casting of, his, of characters in film. I'm looking forward to that one. Thank you. So this story is also about race, but in entertainment and the casting of characters, especially historical characters. And uh, the story is about Anne Boleyn. Boleyn who was, uh, for those who don't know, she was a queen of England from 1533 to 1536 as the second wife of Henry VIII. And, um, for, she tried uh, to provide him with an heir. She got a daughter and then had miscarriages. And then, uh, of course, the king moved on and got another woman, Jane Seymour. And so the king wanted to marry her legally. So, of course, um, treason charges as well as other charges were brought against Anne Boleyn and she was beheaded. But this beheading of Anne Boleyn actually um, made her a key figure in the political and religious upheaval that marked the beginning of English, the English Reformation. 
So she, she's a very, in, a very important figure in, in English history. So Channel 5, British Channel 5, is uh, going to do a series on Anne Boleyn. And they have cast Jordi, what's her name again? Jordi Turner Smith, Turner -Smith uh, a black woman to play Anne Boleyn. And because of her casting, this has sparked a lot of discussion on Twitter about race and uh, instead of whitewashing, some people are calling it blackwashing of white characters and so on. And uh, one one Twitter said that this was uh, this was actually uh, he could not understand it, and he gave an example saying that if a movie was cast for Rosa Parks playing, uh, being played by a white woman, there would be outrage. So I'd like to know what are you, what do you people on the panel think? Is it okay for Jody Turner Smith to play Anne Boleyn, a historical white figure, and uh, and just just be open to casting different races in different uh, such parts? What do you think? Open to discussion. Mm -hmm. so, um could if you're not talking could you please just mute your microphone um i just wanted to say <laughs> listen i i think it's a historical figure and it should stick to the, the facts if she was a white woman she should be played by a white woman because this is a this is not fiction this is not, not the little mermaid or uh what was that other one where people complained when they changed the race the one with the games. What was it called? Game of Thrones. Not Game of Thrones. Hunger Games. Hunger Games. So this is not Hunger Games or or whatever, you know. I think this is was. an actual historical figure. So for me, I feel why why stir the pot? Just cast appropriately. But that's my opinion. Uh, and like Keshi said, I mean, in the past they have whitewashed historical figures that were black. So anyway, whatever. I I don't think they should have cast a black woman, but yeah. Thank you. Uh, how about you, Jamila? Um, I think Imani's hand was up before mine. So. Okay, Imani. Shamsa. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to speak? Yeah, Shamsa. We want to hear you speak. Yeah. So I just want to say that uh, instead of, uh, you know, saying that she's black, she can't play that role, they should, you know, the loser and the haters, they should consider that she is extremely beautiful, talented and gorgeous lady. And she can, you know, yeah, and she can, you know, she can uh, do justice with its role because she's extremely talented. And I just want to quote one thing that she gave birth at home to her baby just because of racism. Because she said, according to the thing, that uh, uh, that death rate is quite high in, you know, black and brown and, you know, BAME uh, in this lady instead of white ladies. So uh, somewhere she had some fear in her mind and she gave birth uh, to uh, her uh, baby at home. And that's quite, you know, it's very, you know, weird thing for uh, me as well. But she, she was scared somewhere. So uh, instead of uh, thinking about all these things, she should be, you know, uh, she should be enough strong that she should go for. And and it was first day of her shooting, and she's happy with everything. But you know, uh, the haters they should uh, see her like a talented actress, and she can uh, justice with the uh, role. Nothing else. Thank you, Shamsa. So what you're saying is that uh, like the casting of Joseph Fiennes as, uh, as Michael Jackson, we should take it as he's a talented white actor who can play Michael Jackson. So it's OK to play yeah. real for other races to play real people in, uh, in films. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, how about Imani? So I actually agree with the Shika on this one because I don't mind if it's a fictional character that people change gender because it's fictional. But if it's like a historical thing, 
and I find that an issue because you have movies, even though they don't make it exactly the same, you do learn from them and the race kind of changes so many things because you being a certain race changes how people interact with you yeah. and how people would see you. Uh, though I do find that, though I don't find it completely bad that they did it because now white people are starting to talk about it. And now they see from our perspective what problem we've had for years. So now it starts to debate, which in that way, it is good in, in my opinion, because now black people can be like, well, that's been our issue for a long time. And now we can actually discuss it and see this is not right. You know, it doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, that's thank all you. I wanted to say. <laughs> Thanks, Imani. We have four people lining up to give three people more. There's Jamila, Shakira, and Antonella in that order. Thank you. Um, okay, so my opinion on this is that it's, I agree with what Imani and Shiko said about the fact that it's historical, like it should be the person. But at the same time, if you look at it behind the scenes, the people who are choosing who's going, it's not Black people choosing a Black person to play a white character. It's the white people who want to join in with the like movement or whatever, who are choosing the cast and they've seen that people are reacting with like, there's not enough Black people in entertainment. So they chose that. But in the past, people are like, if it was the other way around, it's not that because the people who are the directors or the cast choosers are usually white people. So if they're going to choose a Black person, that's them choosing it. It's not black people once again being in power or whatever, choosing to have a black person there. So their anger, they're showing that it's towards the actor, not the people who decided it, which they should have the issue, the real issue with. And I don't think that them saying, well, if it was the other way around and even if it was the other way around, the people who get to choose those people are not us. So the fact that there is a black actor it's still, at least we're getting somewhere, black people are getting somewhere and they're still getting angry, even though at the end of the day, we're still the underdog in that situation. So that's- Thank you, Thank you Jamila. Speaking of underdogs, I'll read a comment and then we'll have Shakira, Antonella and Shiro next. So Jenny Slater, who was an actress uh, giving a voice role, giving her voice as Missy on the an animated comedy Big Mouth on Netflix, quit her role. And the reason she quit this role was because she was pre uh, presenting as a mixed race person. And she said this, at the start of the show, I reasoned with myself mm -hmm. that it's permissible for me to play Missy because her mom is Jewish and white as I am. But she then continued to say, but Missy is also black and black characters on animated shows should be played by black people. She went on to acknowledge that by uh, portraying Missy, she was engaging in the act of erasure of black people. Ending my portrayal of Missy is one step in a lifelong process of uncovering the racism in my actions. So please uh, think about that as we continue. And next is Shakira. Yes, um, I gotta say that I slightly agree with Jamila, but at the same time, I feel like these people who cast whoever, whichever actor, I just feel like they're overcompensating at this point because people are saying that you really are casting black characters that are historically black as white, like as white people. It doesn't make any sense. So I feel like now they're just trying to overcompensate to get more media attention onto whatever project it is because I hadn't heard about this like Anne Boleyn movie or series or in any way, shape or form, except right when it came out and people were outraged because they were like, it's a black woman playing a white character. But then also to the woman who quit uh, playing Big Mouth. I don't know, I also saw black people who also like, no, like, if nobody complained about it in the first place, it's, it's fine. It's more like the ones that are historically inaccurate and then they're trying to overcompensate, but also create media attention. It's just like creating a whole new problem in its steed instead. Thank you, Shakira. So we'll have Antonella and then Shiro. Thanks for the chance, Akashi. Uh, so I will say my opinion on to uh, 
point of view, the, the choice that the mm -hmm. actor made and uh, the society. It's very good that uh, this has created a debate because what we need in this society, in this current society, is uh, to get rid of taboos. So it's good uh, the fact that this uh, choice has created a debate to um, get rid of racism. But from the point of view of the actor, of the, um, how do you call them, the, the film director. Actually, I don't condemn it because uh, uh, now we don't have to do like the completely opposite thing to see racism everywhere. For example, can you imagine a film on Martin Luther King white or a, a white Will Smith? It won't be the same. So in this case, I personally don't see any racism. But on the other end, I, I find very positive the political debate. Uh, we, because it's necessary to uh, to make everyone speak. That's my point of view. Thank you, Antonella. So question to the panel before we hear from Shiro. This is something you can contemplate. Um, does your race make you better to portray someone of a similar race? And does this give a more accurate portrayal of that character? Shiro, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, personally, I don't think it's right for the black actress to to play the role of a white historical figure, because we black people have been complaining forever that white people are, are darkened and to, to play black characters, and we feel that there are many black actors who can play those roles. A good example is uh, the story of Nina Simone, when Zoe Sal Zaldana had to be darkened and have a prosthetic nose. Uh, to portray a woman who was who had completely typical Negroid figures, people were not happy with that. And uh, later on, she herself, the actress, said she regretted accepting that role. So even the actress can can decline the role. Then also, I feel when it comes to history, I think it's Imani who said the way things are portrayed affects people how see, people see history. For instance, me personally, I don't watch. Uh, any documentaries or films about ancient Egypt because they have white actors portraying Egyptians who we know are not white. They were Middle Eastern or black or brown. So that's a, an incorrect uh, uh, show of how they were, or even Jesus Christ, he was not a white man, he was Jewish. So I think they should stick to, to, look, by, to look for actors who look like the, a historical figure that's what I believe personally. And an and actor also can decline the role. It doesn't have to, you don't have to blame the directors. Thank you, Shiro. We have uh, five minutes, three minutes left. So I'd like to say that if we, anyone does a Google search, you can find countless of white actors portraying mm -hmm. black characters or Middle Eastern characters or Asian characters. And they haven't really been complaints until of late where we have, uh, yeah, people are more aware of erasure of, of, uh, of different uh, races or representation or even um, experience, personal experience and racism in entertainment. So it, I, I thought this would be an interesting discussion and it was nice to hear all your views on what you think about this. Google movies like Stark where it's a thriller where uh, Mira Sorvino, I don't know, I think that's her name. She played a black woman who was involved in an accident where she, um, she hit a homeless man with her car. He got stuck in her windscreen mirror. She drove all the way home, she was drunk, left him in the garage, went home, did whatever. And, and that turned out to be a serious case because she was jailed for 50 years. But this is a black woman played by a white actress, and we didn't hear anything about that. So think about that, and then this issue of Jodie Turner, and uh, yeah, what what what's right and what's wrong? Thank you very much. For